the Puritans defined their piety around, uh, they wouldn't have uh, called it this because it's, a Lat it's too Latin, too full of Latin for them, and they were rejecting everything to do with the uh, Antichrist Pope. But it's mortification. Uh, mortification is a very Catholic word. Uh, we, in the season of Lent, define ourselves. And in a way, Lent is the Sabbath in the year for us right. in the Puritan sense, not, I would say, in the Jewish sense. Um, the practice for death of mortification. Um, but say more for the folks about how this sparks uh, a particularly American identity. Uh, I'm thinking, for example, of the tension between Roger Williams and Ann Hutchinson right. and what Shepard represents. Right. So the early forms of dissent obviously come over arguments uh, having to do with the blue laws. And I interpret the blue laws, again, engaging in a certain amount of you know, wild historical interpretation as a kind of, um, well, there's a, there's, a, there's a book that, whose title captures the whole idea for me, Biblical Primitivism. That you know, in a certain sense, what the blue laws were meant to do was recreate as best the Puritans could under radically different circumstances what they read in the Old Testament uh, uh, that the Sabbath was and the New Testament. And it's a kind of, it's, it's, a, it's like reenactment. I, I right. compare it to modern reenactment. Uh, and so it made sense to them. These were, these were the things you must not do. But there was an element, there was a dark uh, sort of element to it and it was punitive and um, uh, there was an element of mortification. I mean, one of the things that as shocked me as a Jew about the Puritan Sabbath was the uh, insistence on a sexual abstinence, which is right. exactly the opposite of what Jews do. Jews, uh, you know, um, believe in sexual activity in the Sabbath, on the Sabbath. Uh, and, uh, you know, they, they, they took quite literally, as if they were Karaites, uh, the the edict against fire, so they had to eat cold food, which when you're living up you know, in the northern part of this country can be a, a hardship. So there was an element of mortification. Um, so they were harsh, these laws. They were very harsh. And so that sparked the first element of dissent and the first discussions that led to uh, religious freedom. Um, and I, uh, I also think that they... Um, I mean, much of the book is devoted to talking about the, the thesis that the Sabbath is an extraordinary sort of machinery for creating community and creating sort of solidarity and, and fellow feeling. And it really is. And it just, it sort of works. Uh, and the, I, I, there's a, like a four-step program for creating community that, that the Sabbath does. And it's, it's I, I say, imagine that you're a social uh, engineer and imagine you wanted to create particularly cohesive societies how would you do it? Well, one thing you would quickly do is you put everyone on a common calendar. Another thing you would do, that's, not, that's sort of before the four steps. What, the, the first thing you'd really do is set aside one day in which everybody could sort of come together, would be freed from their work, and would come together. Uh, and the second thing you would do is make sure that that day is the same for everyone, so that everyone could come together, everyone could not work at the same time. And the third thing you would do is make it habitual so that everybody did this regularly uh, and they could forge these bonds of community. And the fourth thing that you would do would be make it festive, make it something people wanted to do and people loved. And then you would, you'd, you'd have this sort of setup in which you know, community happened. And so I think that um, Emerson actually talks about this and um, so does, um, uh, well, uh, uh, Henry Ward Beecher, um, but a number of, of people in the 19th century talked about this, that without the Sabbath, without the American Sunday, um, you know, neighborliness would disappear. Serendipitous life would disappear. Uh, fellow feeling would disappear. And I think, I think, and they think of it as the sort of element of American exceptionalism. 